welcome to your virtual Ames Public Library. I'm Kathy, I work in Adult Services. And I'm Danielle, I work in Youth Services. And right now you may not recognize where we are, but we're still in the library. We are in our break room. This is where, you know, we might go to eat and relax, and um, especially when the library's open. And we thought since the one of our challenges this week is to read a cookbook or share with us one of your recipe creations, we'd go somewhere where you might get a little bit inspired. Yeah, and we wanted to share some books with you that are stories involving food. So some great descriptions of different meals and desserts and all kinds of things. So I'll start off with The Last Chinese Chef by Nicole Moness. And this is a fantastic book. It is also very timely because this month is Asian Pacific American Heritage Month as well. And most of this book takes place in China. The main character has to go to China to settle a legal dispute. And her boss at a magazine she works for asks her to interview and kind of write an article about this rising culinary star in Chinese cuisine. So lots of good Chinese cultural culinary history. Cool. Well, I also have a book as well that takes place um, with a, uh, the author is, I believe, um, so it's A Big Moon Cake for Little Star, and it's by Grace Lynn, and I believe Grace Lynn is originally from, um, her family is originally from Taiwan, so this is also along with the Asian American Pacific Heritage Month. And this one is great. It is about a little girl who lives in the star in the sky. Her name is Little Star, and she keeps nibbling on this mooncake. And it's beautifully done. The illustrations are gorgeous. Um, makes you really hungry for you know a mooncake or a cookie. So I'm it, already hungry for a mooncake or a cookie. Yeah, this one doesn't have a recipe because I think uh, I read online that Graceland said. They're so difficult that even my grandmother used to just go to the bakery to buy them. Oh my goodness. So you can just buy, I think you can get them online or something. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that one. You're welcome. My next one is The City Baker's Guide to Country Living. And this book is kind of a comedy. The main character, oh, it's by Louise Miller, I should say, who is a pastry chef, so she knows what she's talking about. And so the main character in here is also a pastry chef, and she ends up um, fleeing to the countryside after a mishap at her place of work. And she gets a job at an inn, becomes enamored with small town life, and helps them try to reclaim their blue ribbon in apple pie making. Ooh. Yeah. Now is there a recipe for an apple pie in there? Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> so you can make them to your heart's content. That does sound good. All right, I have one last picture book I want to share with you. This one is called Fry Bread, A Native American Family Story, and it's written by Kevin Noble Mayer and illustrated by Juana Martinez Neal. And it is all about um, a Native American family and making fry bread. And one thing I do want to share is the end pages because they are listing all of the Native American tribes in the United States. And so I love how they show that this is a, you know, um, they're still here and working and look at this beautiful family working together to make some delicious fry bread. And there's some great, um, some great information at the end about what fry bread is and how to make it and all the different types so highly recommend it and share this one with your kiddos or if you just want to read about it too. Yeah, it's okay for you to read a picture book no matter how old you are. Yeah, we call them everyone books. There you go. I like that. My next one is called Kitchens of the Great Midwest by J. Ryan Stradall. And this is set in Minnesota. I know. I thought you'd be excited about that. My home that. state. <laughs> so this one is about a single father who is raising a daughter and instilling a love of food in her as she grows up. And what's unique about it too is that every chapter centers on a different dish and is told from the point of view of a different character. So even though it's about his daughter, only one chapter is from her point of view. That sounds awesome. It's really interesting. I might be stealing that from you, Kathy. <laughs> a grown-up book. I know. Well, I wanna switch up a little bit 
Uh, this is actually a fantasy graphic novel, and it's called Rutabaga, The Adventure Chef, and it's by Eric Colossal, and it is about a uh, kid, I guess, named Rutabaga and his magic cooking pot who are on a journey, and all Rutabaga wants to do is go around and find new and exciting dishes to cook, but he gets into a ton of trouble on the way but he usually ends up on top so he's pretty awesome i definitely love this one what a great adventure yeah i wouldn't recommend making any of the recipes in this one because it like has dragon eggs and stuff like that and those in are it. hard to find yeah i don't know if i could source them yeah. well thanks for the recommendation regardless yeah it's good yeah. so the last one that i want to talk about is called the coincidence of coconut cake and i love this cover i also love coconut cake Ooh, that right? looks amazing. And there is a recipe for it in here. Okay. So this one, if you're a fan of You've Got Mail, the mm -hmm. film with Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan, this one has a lot of echoes of that in here. The main character discovers in the same day her fiance is having an affair, and then a really harsh food critic comes to the restaurant that she owns, and that review gets published. Uh -huh. And then a couple days later, she's in a bar, just kind of sad. She meets this really cute guy. They decide to hang out a little bit. And down the road, they each figure out, oh, the food critic figures out, this is the restaurant I wrote a really bad review of. Do I tell her? Do I not tell her? What Ooh. happens? And so it's a good read. You should try it. I shall try it. And also try the coconut cake. Yeah. Well, how about you make the coconut cake and I'll read the book. I'll bring it to share. <laughs> that would be awesome. All right. I also have one last book. And this one, we're jumping up to young adult. And again, um, I wouldn't recommend making any of the recipes. It's another kind of... Um, it's a little more science fiction slash um, horror movie type thing. It's called Killer Pizza, and it's by Greg Taylor. And it is about a kid who's 14 years old, 14, 15 years old, and all he wants to do, he's been watching the Food Network, um, and he just wants to grow up to be like the next Food Network guy, he, you know? And so he decides, okay, there's a new pizza place opening up in town. I'm old enough. I'm gonna try to get a job, and he does. But what turns out is that it is a pizza place, and they do make very interesting sounding pizzas, but it's also a front for a monster hunting organization, which Toby, that's our main character, is just like, this is not what I signed up for. But it's just really entertaining. There's a little bit of, a little bit of scariness, a little bit of humor, and it's just a fun read. I like on the back how it says, pizza you'll die for. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lovely almost pun. <laughs> well, we hope you enjoyed hearing about these great books and the great food that's contained within them. And we also hope that you'll share with us some of your recipe experimentation. Yeah. Have a great day and enjoy.